Previously on AgentPalmer.com, Canada is a country so nice Douglas Copeland wrote about it twice. Apollo 10 and a half is pure rotoscoped moon movie magic, and I've never seen Khan and Luke Cage in the same place, so perhaps they are the same. This is The Palmer Files, episode 69, with Jennifer Montgomery, who is not only a connoisseur of coffee, but founded a company named 40 Cups of Coffee. We discuss how 40 Cups came to be, networking with purpose, career transitions, being present, embracing the things we don't know, defining success, being exceptional, and much, much more. Are you ready? Let's do the show! Welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturchik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 69th episode is Jennifer Montgomery. She is the founder of 40 Cups of Coffee and a managing partner at Blue Door Group. This conversation is for everyone. If you're in a job you like, if you're in a job you don't like, if you don't have a job, if you're in school, if you're retired, no matter where you are in your career path or transition or what have you, this conversation is important. We discuss networking with purpose, and to that end, using coffee as a metaphor. You'll hear more buzzwords than you can shake a stick at, but with good reason. And of course, we'll tackle some tough things, such as the concept that self-evaluation is an ongoing process. And to that end, your answers today won't necessarily be your answers tomorrow. All of that and so much more is coming your way. But first, if you want to discuss the episode as you listen or afterwards, you can tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Jennifer Montgomery at 40 Cups of Coffee, that's four zero Cups of Coffee, or this show at The Palmer Files. You can find more information about Jennifer and 40 Cups at bluedoorgroup.ca. And don't forget, you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com. And of course, email can be sent to thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. So without further ado, grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's get going. Jennifer, the blog is named agentpalmer.com and on the blog, I did a series about coffee a long time ago. And I always joke that for whether it's podcasting or the blog, that my number one inspiration and fuel and hydration is coffee. Like coffee is everything. Um, without coffee, there is no blog. Without coffee, there's no podcast. And I bring it up because if I really thought about it, maybe I would have thought of like a co- more coffee themed name than Agent Palmer or the Palmer Files, but I didn't. And I'm, I look, I'm happy with my branding, but you are branding as 40 cups of coffee, which is just i i mean i i love it i love the name you 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 have me at the name and i just want to start off by asking is that a day or a week <laughs> that depends sometimes it's a day sometimes it's a week <laughs> um but I, I like your little you almost went to jerry Maguire there with you had me at coffee i mean i think that's going to make it to the instagram next week okay I mean, I'm all right. I'll, I'll I'll pull it out. I'll give it to you in post. You know, just <laughs> I'll quote you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Love it. So, why forty cups of coffee? Where Where's that start? Well, it's really funny. It it kind of started as a joke, um, when I was kind of facing this extreme career transition, uh, not really sure what was going to be the next step in my life here. A friend had said, you know, you should meet this person. And uh, I said, okay, I'm open to that. And they said, okay, great, I'm going to send you an email. So they send the two of us an email and say, you know, here's our e-intro. You know, the whole spiel, you could copy and paste that probably now from everyone you know. Yeah. And uh, great, we we met for coffee and chatted. And uh, we had a really, really, really wonderful conversation, a, a deep conversation. He asked me some really challenging questions not like personal, but from a professional perspective, kind of like where my personal drive was and where my goals were professionally. 
And uh, it, it was much more than I had expected to get out of just this, you know, e-intro coffee meetup. Well, okay. So here's, I have a, I have a couple questions. First off, yeah. how long ago was this? Four or five years ago, maybe four, four years ago, I think. Okay. Because, because I feel like having just done a not extreme career transition, but a career transition, um, I feel like every day I wake up with different answers to what those questions, like what those, like what drives you, where do you want to be, where are you going um, what do you want to do? What do you want to create? Who do you want to help? I feel like on a daily basis, you and I could have a cup of coffee seven days of the week. And you know, there might be some themes. Okay. There might be some <laughs> themes, but overall I'm in a space where like self-evaluation means that I'm changing my answers every time I think of those questions. So I'm not going to ask you for your answers back then, but have they changed? <laughs> yes, I think that's a great perspective. And I think that's something that we've learned along the way. So, you know, the number 40 was quite random in, a, in the sense that it just rolled off the tongue when we joked about it, um, my business partner, Stephanie, and I. And uh, at our first meeting, she was, you know, one of these kind of, well, he, he introduced me to two more people and they introduced me to two more people. And, you know, 40 cups later, <laughs> Stephanie and I meet and, you know, we hit it off as this great kind of moment, this synergy, you know, um, like, okay, like, you know, like when you find your person, it was like finding your person, but like your business version of your person. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe like a little Grey's Anatomy there, right? Like a little Sandra O oh kind of moment. And, and we jokingly just said, oh my gosh. I think I had 40 cups of coffee and, you know, it wasn't this precise number. We weren't literally each keeping track, uh, but it, it was kind of this generic ballpark term that was somewhat accurate of how long it took us to find each other in this process of, you know, two coffees, three coffees a week, uh, maybe more. And, uh, and so it just kind of rolled off the tongue initially, but it, it, it was the, it was really powerful. And it's like, we almost, we talk about almost feeling it in the moment as though we had hit something, you know, like we had, we'd struck gold that we didn't know we were looking for. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's, that's, I guess what I thought I was looking for at that time was a job. I thought I was on a job hunt. That was my goal. That was my mission was to find the next great job, the next great career move working for someone else. And I think that that has changed drastically. Well, you know, a few episodes ago, I had my current boss on and I met her through networking. And, you know, I've been networking during a pandemic, which means I've been networking not for a job. Like, I mean, yeah, the goal of networking is to find a connection and eventually get a job. And that actually did work out for me. However, you don't actually think that that's going to happen in that kind of a way. And you're just meeting people to meet people and to like expand mm -hmm. the network, which is where networking really comes in. Right. And to me, you know, it's a pandemic and I don't want to be limited to my locale. Right. Because mm -hmm. it limits my prospects. There might be somebody somewhere else. Um, so it's, it's a digital cup of coffee, you know, whatever. Um, and in listening to you, uh, a cup of coffee is a meeting, right? It's a, it's a, it's a phone call. It's a insert thing here. It's what 20 years ago would have definitely been, let's go have a cup of coffee. And now, no, just call my cell phone, which has now turned into, oh, let's jump on a video call of some kind. Right. Yeah. I need to get back at, I like, I, I'm really bad at maintaining the networking through employment. I only ever seem to do it when I'm looking and I realize that by then it's too late. Like you might be able to fill in the gaps a bit more quicker if you were networking all along. Right. And, and I like, it's, it's weird. It's like, I know I should drink more water, but I don't. Right. I just like it's mm. one of those things. But I will say one of the exciting things about networking is kind of the reason I enjoy doing this podcast is I get to talk to and get confronted by new questions, new paradigms, new information. And what what I find fascinating 
is I decided to challenge my networking uh, meeting other side. I don't know. Networking people, my, my connections, my new connections <laughs> about a year and a half ago, which is how I met my current boss. Because I started, you know, at the end of every network, this is universal, you know, oh, you know, if it goes well, oh, thanks, Jen. It was nice meeting you. If there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. I started calling people on that the moment they said it. I was just, I would end every call with, if you happen to have one or two names of somebody else I could talk to. That was it. That's eventually how I met my boss. And I think it took people aback because I don't, I don't want to be mean, but I know a lot of that, you know, if there's ever anything I can do is a mostly empty gesture, right? It's mostly (laughs) just posturing. That's interesting. That's a really interesting perspective. And, you know, as we were talking about kind of before this, you know, we were talking about kind of being from slightly different places. Um, Where I live and where I am from here in Atlantic Canada, it's very much your professional growth is very much connected to the who you know. And so network is becoming like this really, really powerful, you know, it's it's a powerful tool in your toolbox to achieve what you want to achieve professionally if you are intending to grow in this particular geography. Okay. But I I like what you said about, you know, this piece about networking and giving it up and using it as a job hunting tool, because I think for me at the beginning, that's what 40 cups was. And and it wasn't even 40 cups. It was literally one cup and I hadn't even (laughs) named it. Um, But I think that that's the journey that we've learned about with coffee and all was, you know, every coffee has a lesson. Yeah. And then those lessons are what informs our perspectives. It what makes us change. It, it's what makes us grow. Um, all of those great things that that happen to us. And I think the networking with purpose is is that piece that we really focus on teaching people. Really, is that what you were doing and asking for two more coffees is a central piece of what we feel made us successful. And uh, so we've actually even created, you know, a free download that people can use like a little worksheet to help you create that purpose, to help you stay accountable to yourself, to say, who did I ask? And then follow up with them kind of, you know, a a very, uh, a very rudimentary form of your own uh, journaling or personal CRM, if you will. But, you know, when you connect your networking to purpose, that purpose can mean different things. For us, coffee is the metaphor. It's yeah. about connecting with people. It's about inspiring each other. It's about growing. And what those things can mean for each of us can be very, very different. And when you mentioned, you know, kind of having this digital coffee, uh, the first time you said that, I actually had like this NFT picture in my head, like, oh, you know, like somebody's gonna make a little <laughs> digital coffee cup, right? Um, but, you know, when the pandemic kind of really shut us down, um, and for, for me, that was March 2020. I think that was for most most yep. of us in, in North America was March. You know, we we had this idea. We had this 40 cups. We had been rolling it around for a while. We were like, this is fun to say, but what does it really mean? You know, what what's our method? What did we do that made us successful? Let's really deep dive and, you know, take an, a, an analysis of what we did that we feel made us successful. And can we turn that into something we can teach people? And we were working on that when um, when the pandemic kind of shut us all down. And so we just said, okay, well, we have this. Let's use it. Let's use it for good. You know, our friends were losing their businesses, some of them very big and profitable businesses, and all of a sudden they were gone. I mean, we've all lived that. We all know yeah. what happened. And And so for us, it was really a karma offering. It was, you know, something that has always been important to us is, you know, in our in our other life and our job at Blue Door Group is to, you know, always have that karma client, that person that you mentor or support or promote because it's the right thing to do because you want to see others succeed because you want to help small business. But this kind of became our karma offering to the whole group of everyone to say, we're going to host it. We're going to use our network. We're going to introduce you all to our network. And hopefully we're going to help each other get through this, whether it's just having a cup of coffee so you don't feel alone because you're in your own apartment or whether it's because you need an hour away from your kids. So my question to you then is I am happily employed right now and I need to get back out on the networking trail just to, you know, keep it going, you know, just to, to finally do what I know I'm supposed to do, which is to keep meeting people. But I don't know if I have a purpose. I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess, so how about this? I will ask you this. 
is just meeting people enough of a purpose or do I need something maybe not to the level of I'm looking for my next job that because that wouldn't be actually accurate. But, you know, I'm looking for, you know, do I need to have a more concrete purpose like I'm trying to, I don't know, learn something specific or I'm trying to, um, you know, maybe find a mentor. Right. Uh, because I, I mean, I look up to a lot of people. I wouldn't say I actually have a mentor right now. Right. So uh, yeah. I just that's we'll, we'll get to mentorship. But like as far as purpose, like should I find one or is just meeting people right uh, a blanket you know because th this is the other thing i will say as a preface to this question that i've already spent forever asking is there have been there were a couple networking calls i had over the last few years where either in setting up the call or in in the email exchange run up people would come out and just be like what are you looking to get out of this mm. like stone-faced i'm like i I want to talk to you like you have some information that may be good for me. Um, I always hesitated at like I'm looking for a job because at a certain point it became apparent like, oh, this is a lot of people. I should just. OK, if if there's an opportunity, I'll find it. I don't need to be like, oh, no, I'm just talking to you because of you might have a job. Like, it was just like, oh, no, you may. You know, I'm I don't know. I want to tell you what I'm good at and I want you to maybe. But none of that's real purpose, right? That's right. just, hey, let's grab a cup of coffee. You know, it goes back to that mm -hmm. initial thing. Do I need a purpose? I think you do. And and the reason I say that, and, and I'm not talking, you know, big, big picture purpose, <laughs> meaning of life purpose, right? Yeah. But networking is all about building relationships, right? It's re yeah. It has to be reciprocal. It's going to be successful. So, you know, I think a lot of people make the mistake of associating the word networking with sales or pitching or job offers. But I think networking can be so much more, right? Like, you know, there is, there's the kitschy terms around, you know, whether or not you're going to, uh, your network is your net worth. Um, and you can argue about that till the cows come home, I'm sure. But, you know, I, I do think that there is some value to that statement that your network is important to you. Sure. It's important to the relationships you build. I mean, I've had coffee meetups where I just said it loud, like, I just think you're a cool person and uh, I like what I see what you're doing online. And I know six other people who think you're a cool person too. So, you know, how many new friends are you making as grownups, right? It's like, it's, it's just, it's harder to do. So I think there's a great opportunity there just to build relationships with people, make new friends. There is the learning component. There's always the job component. And I think sometimes, you know, what is going to come out of that coffee and sometimes you don't but when you go in with purpose and with intent you're going to come out with a result and i always like to tell people that sometimes a no is just in, as important a result as hey you're my new best friend sure yeah i could see that because i look back at my seven years in retail and you know, I have no ill will towards the people that were like assistant managers and like making a career out of it. But I did learn two things. I learned a lot about how not to do things. Um, but I also learned that I never want to be a manager. Um, and, and that's not I mean, it, it's not entirely that Like, I never want to be a manager of people. I don't mind being a project manager. I, I can be a producer, like I can be a, a, you know, an EP, like I can, I can follow the things and make sure I, I don't do so well managing people. <laughs> um, but I've also seen how not to manage people, which is also how I know. Yeah. Those are some mistakes I would probably also make. Like that's not a thing. Right. But I, I don't mind a no, right. Like I don't mind a failure. Like a, as long as I'm, because I know I'm going to learn from it. Yeah. Um, Sometimes a no is a win. Like I know, you know, <laughs> I've had clients who have said no and I was really disappointed. I thought it was going to go, it was going to be a great, you know, plan or what have you. And then, you know, down the road, you learn about, you know, how it went or what was going on behind the scenes, the things you didn't know. And you go well, like, phew, really escaped that one. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say for every thing that's gone on in the last little bit, I realized that. Most people only see the face value and I'm okay with any answer. And I think, look, 
as a hobby, podcasting's not like, uh, like it's great for me. I know it's not like great for everybody. Right. But it also means I'm going to get rejected. But the entire premise of my show is that I am going to talk to someone. And I have to ask those someones, right? Like I've gotten no's, but I also can't get a yes if I don't ask. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of been very weird because there's very little distinction between, hey, Jen, do you want to come on my podcast? And hey, Jen, do you want to just jump on a call and have a networking session? Like, I I understand that the conversation is different and obviously the purpose is that I'm going to share this with the world. And and you know that going in. But the ask is absolutely the same. Because a lot of the time, even if we're introduced by someone, by a third party, I still have to ask. Or, you know, there's still a thing like, hey, Jen, do you want to go for coffee? Hey, Jen, do you want to mm-hmm. be on my podcast? Like, it's the same thing. And I I know that I, I, I got to get it out of my head that they're not the same. They're similar. <laughs> <laughs> because like it's so interesting that you say that because I almost see those as the inverse because to me so I talk a lot um about and having a give and having an ask okay and I think it's really important but I, I think I see them almost the opposite as you're expressing them because okay. to me when you are saying you're have you have an ask you're saying hey come on my podcast that's actually a give you're providing value. You're providing value to the audience who wants to listen, who wants to grow, who wants to learn new things, hear other people. Uh, you know, my goodness, there's a whole group of, there's a whole bunch of people there into these podcasts. They're everywhere, right? So that's providing value, whether it's entertainment or what have you. You're providing value to me and my network by sharing 40 Cups story and the opportunity for other people to join our network and our community. I think that's a give. And I think that's a superpower. And I think, you know, when we think, start thinking about, you know, the give and the ask, and instead of leading with the ask, we shift our thinking to leading with our give, then networking becomes purposeful in that we are always seeking to provide value. Okay. Okay. I mean, cause look, I, you're still talking to a guy who's got a job he likes and still doesn't know what he wants to do. Right. Sure. And, and if, you know, I, I keep coming back to this because, you know, often I ask people what they do and often they ask me what I want to do. Cause it's fair, you know, fair is fair. Like I can't be like, Oh, you know, <laughs> what's your thing. And I'm not going to tell you mine, but you know, I've gotten to a point where I know I want to help people make cool things, but I don't want to necessarily make the cool things myself. So we're talking about what? A lot of C words, right? Consulting, coaching, counseling. We're also talking about like in in other industries, we're talking about producing, editing, Mm -hmm. directing maybe. Um, So we're talking about these kind of things. But for the listening audience, for you, for me, as I listed all those things, how many different mediums, media, how many different projects, how many different anything just went through your head? And obviously, depend. you know, if you're a, a big television watcher, like you're thinking, oh, he could do a series or a movie watcher. You're like, oh, he's going to EP a movie or, you know, a podcast listener, a music listener, a, 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 a writer. Like, you know, there's no end to the possibilities there. It's a little overwhelming, I'll be honest, but I have gotten to the point where I do just want to facilitate. I'm just going to come up with all, let me, hold on. Let's see how many more buzzwords I can get out, right? <laughs> but like, it feels that way sometimes. Uh, and I'm taking what I can, right? Yeah. I've, I've helped publish a book. I've helped produce podcasts. I've, I've helped launch websites and blogs and other brands. And I'm, I'm working on a movie. Um, so there, I, I've dabbled a little bit in everything and I haven't found something I hate, right. Other than I don't want to manage people. Like, so (laughs) I, I still don't have that answer. Don't Jen, don't turn. Like, I, I don't know what I want to do. I I have a general idea of kind of what I want to do. Like, I guess I have a general idea of the kind of work I would like to do, but not who, it's with or what the end result is. And that's kind of where I end up. Look, this is a breakthrough. I finally put it into words in less than two minutes. Right. But even though it's rambling and I'll listen back to this 
I'll probably keep this in, but like I'll probably distill this down because one of the things that was the worst after I had been let go a few years ago was the people that were already in my network that you reach out to first that you're you're not expanding the network, but you're just kind of falling back into your network, I guess, especially when you're in between jobs is what's their first question. What do you want to do? Or where do you want to be? And I can tell you because some of these people were either close to me or like they had known me or knew of me. I frustrated a lot of people by saying, I don't know. Right. Like that was a thing. And I had my big nine year job was a hybrid role. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which was basically two jobs, but it was a hybrid role. It was it slash marketing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, guess what? Everybody I talked to when I said, I don't know, was like, well, you know, there's money in it. Right. Well, I've never been motivated by money. And I, I, I guess not a lot of people knew that until I started getting out there because everybody was like, well, you should go into it. Like, I, no, like, why? No, I don't want to do like, no, I, I don't mind problem solving when it occurs, nice. but I don't like being in surrounded by people's problems all the time. <laughs> no, like, no, no, thank you. And, and I didn't even, but even the marketing, I was like, eh, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's pieces of it. I like, I, you know, so I learned a lot by telling people, I don't know. And like literally destroying them inside because a lot of them were like very <laughs> close to me like it's that close network yeah. stuff so they they want to yeah. help sure. and so they're you know they're on the edge of their seat you know hey what do you want to do and they're on the edge of their seat thinking like okay he just got out of this job i know this person in it i know this person in marketing right. and then i go i don't know and they go well i can't help you <laughs> but but we have we have gotten to this place in time where, you know, and from an educational perspective, I talk, used to talk about this a lot about, you know, when I, when I worked at, to, when I was an educator at the senior high school level, you know, we would talk to youth about what they were going to do and how, what university they were going to go to. And, and I think never before have we been in a place where there are so many jobs and roles and different fancy titles <laughs> that you could find now. No one could possibly know everything that they would ever want to do because the options are now endless, you know, whereas when you were younger, you kind of had 10 options, you know, you were, you were a nurse and, you know, and, and they were even like just divided by gender roles too, you know, like in the old days, you know, like I mean, even when I was growing up, you know, it was very much about get the quote unquote good job. And that meant you worked Monday to Friday, it yeah. meant you worked nine to five. It meant you had a pension. It meant you worked for either a gigantic organization or a government entity. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and, and I think that's changed so much. So, you know, I love what you're talking about saying, you know, like I like to do all of these things and I can imagine my day looking in all of these different ways that would, would you know, make me happy you know, content for sure, but maybe even really happy. But is it going to make me happy to go back to the beginning of our conversation? Is it going to make me happy forever? Or is that my next 40 cups, right? Like (laughs) as I keep drinking the coffee, am I going to keep learning about myself and growing? And and I don't think that's the secret sauce for everyone. I don't think everyone's going to want to, you know, try a latte today and you know, an Americano tomorrow, there's going to be the people who are always going to drink in Canada, we would call it a double double. Um, But that's okay, too. But I think we have to start recognizing that, you know, this idea of finding what you're passionate about and making it your job, and you'll never work a day in your life. Like, this is a big misnomer, you know, like what you're passionate about today could change. There are parts of your job, no matter what it is, that you're going to hate. If you make your hobby your job, you may no longer love your hobby. I've seen that happen to you. The, one of the themes of this podcast has always been the a, a small undercurrent of like, would I take money to do this? Right. Because, you know, then, I, I, you know, obviously I'm not independently wealthy, so it's not my money. So it's somebody else's money. And how does that change the show? And what influence do they want to observe over me? Um, I, my, my number one example is always going back to Chris Hardwick selling Nerdist because it was something he built and something he was passionate about. And obviously he was in charge of it when it grew into, from just a blog into a podcast and then into, you know, other mediums. 
Mm -hmm. I still can hear the sadness of him leaving Nerdist because it was no longer his. Like he was the founder of it. It was no longer his, right? It's it's what happens when startups grow up. And and then you go, all right, well, I guess the, the, the founders aren't there anymore. And why is that? Because it, it's not the founder's thing anymore. And yeah. I know I worked in retail for seven years and then I had a job for nine. Okay. I had two jobs post-college, even though one was retail, two jobs post-college in a time where most of my contemporaries had seven jobs. I had two jobs in 16 years, right? Most people had like five, seven, three or four. But like, you know, me being like, oh, I still work here. Oh, I still work in retail. Oh, I still work in retail. Same place. And then, oh, I'm still at this nonprofit and I'm still at this, you know, I was the oddball. I mean, now, since then, not so much. Like the the odds have definitely the average. I have averaged out a little bit, but you know, I I do think that that change matters. And the thing I can say, without a shadow of a doubt, is you don't wake up the next day from tragedy. Like it doesn't have to be my mom died. I woke up the next day and decided I want to do something else or I lost my job. I woke up. I want to do something else. Uh, I didn't get the promotion. My team lost the world series. Uh, you know, my girlfriend dumped me. My boyfriend dumped me. Uh, you know, it, my best friend moved away. Like I spilled coffee on my sleep. It does. You can live. Okay. Hold on. That's too far. No. Okay. <laughs> but like you, you can wake up tomorrow with a different, mission a different ambition and there is no rhyme or reason and you know this podcast is not me putting on a persona i'm a very excitable person and one of the things that kind of helped me formulate the whole buzzword soup that i went through not too long ago in this episode is i found myself getting excited at certain things and that was helping people period like full stop, right? Um, Helping them do what? Uh, What do they need help with, right? Like that's that's my next question. But it also means that I'm going to wake up tomorrow and maybe I want to do something else, but I'll still want to help people, right? And so that's been fun. But I got to say, like my parents grew up with parents that had one job. Right. I grew up with parents that had a couple jobs. You were going to change maybe one or two times, but for the most part, you stayed within your industry. Absolutely. Now I'm in a generation. Technically I'm in a shoulder generation. I get into this all the time. I'm not millennial and I'm not gen X, but whatever. But like you look at generation X, they not only had multiple jobs like the baby boomers, they had multiple industries. They they had multiple jobs across industries. They changed. They were the first ones to go, all right, well, I'm, I, I, I'm not an accountant anymore, so now what am I going to do? And they didn't immediately just go, I'm going to be an accountant somewhere else, right? But Gen X, we did this weird thing in Gen X where we did it like at the end, right? Like we all did it at mid career, yeah. <laughs> right? Like that's what, that's what we did. We yeah. were like, Oh shit, it's mid career. I better, you know, like get off the pot here, make a change, do something now. It's yeah. never, never, I'm going to die. Like, and you're going like, well, you're in your forties. So, you know, it was really, really bizarre. We weren't, we weren't, um, inspired and encouraged to accept failure, to no. face fear to embrace uncertainty that was not okay so i you know so now we get into the kind of like this mid-career where well you know you're gonna either step up the ladder or you're not and if you're not then what are you gonna do you feel like you're kind of like in this lost abyss that was never your trajectory um you know and and so there's like this big kind of question that comes up of well now what whereas you know now we've seen kind of, you know, the millennials, I don't like to use these terms all the time, but I guess it does kind of give us a frame of reference that yeah. everybody understands who they did do this. They learned to do it early and they are climbing the corporate ladders faster than ever before because they've learned so many things 
so early in their career, whereas we kind of came out of the gate saying, well, I've got my university degree. Where's my six figure salary? Well, I, yeah. Right. Well, and I think the other piece of it is um, the quote unquote geeks inheriting the earth. Look, uh, speaking as one, we have dealt with failure a lot more in those early adolescent years than say the popular kids. Right. Yeah. And even, you know, the, the, and, and, and I, I, I was lu- lucky enough or unlucky enough. I mean, unlucky enough at the moment back in that time to be, uh, in band and, uh, just normal geek and a uh, sports like runner. So I kind of got the failure from all the different places. Cause normally the only time those a type high school personalities fail is as an athlete. It's, it's on the court. It's on the field. It's on the pitch. It's what, you know, on the ice, wherever you are. Some of us failed many times in many other places. So when we got there, it wasn't unfamiliar territory, right? But we don't know where to go next. Like that's the thing. And, and I, the, it comes up a lot in conversations, both on this podcast and I, that I have in general of people my age and, and slightly older, especially Gen X. We went to college, university, post-secondary because we were supposed to. It's what we did. Right. Like there was never a path for, well, you could just learn a skill. I mean, kind of, but you still did that in a post-secondary technical school for two years. Right. Um, yeah. You know, graduation day was always what's next. Not what are you going to do? And what's right. next was always more education. Um, Absolutely. And and so that's how you end up with me with a liberal arts AA and a communications bachelor's because, well, those are two degrees you get when you don't know what you want to do. Like, I, and I don't mean, I don't like, I don't have any ill will towards that, but I look back and I go, Those two degrees I have because I had no idea. Like we've spent a half hour talking about how I didn't know and still kind of don't know what I want to do. Those degrees would have told like in hindsight, those degrees tell me that. Right. If I had majored in English. Oh, you want to be a writer. Like maybe you're not good at it, but you want to be a writer like it, or, or, you know, mass media. Oh, you want to be a journalist or you want to be on TV or, you know, there are things. But I am li- like, how much more general can you get liberal arts? Not any not not sp- sp- just liberal arts. Right. And communications. OK, I'm interested in philosophy and I like to talk to people like yeah. that, how general can you be? Right. Yeah. Like, okay. But it goes back to that idea about like, well, what do you like to do? Right. Well, like, so, you know, and kids, like kids are kids, right. You're, like, you're 17 years old. And you're like, well, what do you like to do? You're like, well, I like to play video games. Great. You should go design video games. Like, no, what? No, like slow down. You yeah, know, like, yeah. what do you like to do? Well, I don't know. I like to bake cookies. Like, great. You should be a chef. Like, no, stop. Like, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I know that there's like this great conversation. I think there's a really powerful place for the conversation about formal education versus informal education. Sure. Education, regardless of how you want to qualify it or quantify it, um, is good. Whether it be I'm learning from you uh, in a conversation, whether it be, um, you know, an online course that, you know, teaches you how to use a new product or I'm not paid to plug this in any sort of way, but you know, like I love using HubSpot. I love their HubSpot university. It's great. I can go on. I like technology. I like learning about technology. It's a fun way to learn it. And they teach me useful skills. So I think there's value in that kind of education. And I think there's value in the formal education, regardless, you know, if it's post-secondary or college or, or university or what have you, that maybe isn't specific to the content of what you will do in your career as much as it is in terms of informing your perspective. Okay. Young people graduate public school now, or I guess private school in many cases, but, but the, you know, the, the youth system, they graduate so early. They're like 17 years old. What on earth? They're going to live for another 80 years. They don't know (laughs) squat yet. 
right? Like nothing. I mean, we all thought we knew everything, but no, we don't. Yeah. And certainly nothing about careers and all of the opportunities that are available to us. And we're asking them to make these life decisions at 17 years old when it's, you know, maybe we need to further our understanding. Maybe we need to deepen our thinking. Maybe we do need more philosophy classes so that we can learn to listen and question more instead of coming up with answers all the time. Yeah, that's, I mean, we don't have to go down that road because I feel like you and I are going to be on the same boat there. But like, <laughs> I, um, look, I, I'm a, I'm a fairly bright person. And I, I, I think that I, I, I say that not because like I have an ego which I do, I, I have quite a healthy ego, but I also know that other people are surprised. Like I have the ability to surprise people with, with, with either being smart or intelligent. I don't know, which could also say something about like, Oh, I must not come off as smart or intelligent. But I will tell you that when I graduated, I was average. I don't, I do not think there is anything average about me, excepting that I can't, I don't have the memory. I never had a memory. I never had a good memory. Concepts I could grasp, memory not so much. Did you read the book? Yes, I did. I didn't agree with what the character did. Well, what what was he wearing? I don't remember. Well, clearly you didn't read the book. <laughs> Are you serious with me right now? This is the right. conversation. Where, so, I, I mean, when you get further on, I get it. Like, it makes a lot more sense. And I think one of the things that, uh, quote unquote, average students learn in abundance especially when you get to university college even if it's just community colleges just grab pass the class but just grasp the concept that's all that matters right mm -hmm. and then you get your first job and guess what they don't ask for your gpa and then no. you get your second job and they do not care they like, do you have a degree? Yes or no. Do you have any work experience? Yes or no. That's where it ends. Right. And you get to this point where now looking back decades after graduating with a degree, I go, I spend way too much time like worrying about like a 4.0. Like it had yeah. no bearing. Yeah. I could, I, you know, I, I, I'm not saying like I could have gone to that party. I was fairly well involved. One of the reasons my GPA was horrible was I actually got involved on campus. But if I had no, you know, it's, it's always, if I had known, but you yeah. know, generation X millennials, we're all still young enough to do something about it. Right. Like, yeah. you know, we're, we are going to live still another 40 or 50 years at yeah. least. Um, so you know, take that as you will. Which is so interesting when you think about it, because we used to think, you know, oh, you know, I'm mid-career, I'm 40, I'm 45, whatever it is. Oh, gosh, you know, and I'm not achieving where I want to achieve or I'm not at the role I want to be at or the income level, whatever it is that that propels us to find change. I'm not happy in my job. I'm bored sitting at this desk, whatever it is. Yeah. And um, But when you think about it, you know, you have like another 20 years to work. All right. So what do you want to do? <laughs> well, and I'll counter that by saying I am um, almost 40, depending on when this airs, closer to 40 than not, but still not 40 yet. Um, I thought 30 was old, right? Like I'm closer, I'm I'm almost 40 <laughs> and I, you know, growing up, right? Like 20, you know, you don't think of 20 is old. Even 29, you don't really think of as old. 30, 30's old. I'm pushing 40. I got a friend who turned 40 last year, right? No, not 40. It's funny, you know, because people used to think um, at the beginning of 40 Cups, people thought it was tied to an age thing. Um, <laughs> like, this is like my midlife thing, um, which it was like very close to when I turned 40. So it was funny. But as I get older, it, that that connection gets further and further away. Yeah. But, but yeah, people thought it was an age thing at first, which was kind of funny, but I don't know. I think 40 is my jam. Like a friend of mine said to me the other day, 41 is the new 25. And I was like, you know what? It totally is because there's this, I don't know, this confidence that comes with it. This kind of, you know, like, eh, I don't give a fuck, like whatever, yeah. you know, not in a, not in a dismissive or rude sort of a way, no. but just in a, you know, like I've, I've experienced some life. I have had some highs. I've had some lows. It's confidence. I have context to it's, bring to this. It's confidence, really, yeah. because you, yeah. you have had those highs and lows, and you've weathered. I mean, this is the thing. We hit 40, 
we've had our ups and downs and we've survived both the ups and the downs, right? Like, okay, Mm -hmm. like, all right, time to do that, you know, and, you know, we're getting like time to finally do that thing, right? What is that thing, right? You're going to write a book of poetry. Good for you. But you've weathered so much up to this point. Go do it. What, like the, what's the worst that could happen? You've probably experienced worse than if you don't follow through on this. There's a million things you haven't followed through on. I'm no different, right? Like, or you want to make a movie, you want to write a script, do it. Like if you don't finish, that's fine. You'll find something else. But we, we always have this thing and I'm kind of excited, um, that I don't know where. And I think this is the other new piece to all of this. I embrace the, I don't know right now. Right. Like I, and I know I talked about like, man, it hurt some people that were trying to help me. And I understand that because there's not a lot you can do for me in 20 minutes. <laughs> like you, this conversation yeah. is going to be more helpful to me long term than a 15 minute networking call, especially when my answer is, I don't know. Right. But I'm embracing it. I, I don't mind that. I don't know what tomorrow is. That doesn't scare me. and. I don't know if I'm really excited at the prospect, but I'm not scared of it. And I think that's a step in the right direction. I think so too. And I think for me, like that's kind of, you know, as I've explored, you know, my next 40 cups, my next 40 cups um, is, you know, this component of, of really leaning in to, you know, what at first was desperate, what at first was job seeking sure, and is now an incredible path of learning, like learning from other people is, so profound to me because we have all, even though we may have similar experiences, we've all experienced them uniquely because of all of the other past experiences we've brought and the lenses through which we see the world. And so we learn so much from one another. And I had the, I had the pleasure to um, guest on a, for lack of a better term, like a blog kind of a thing okay. um, a community where you kind of highlight your posts of the week. And it was all about gratitude. Steve Foran, uh, a great, great entrepreneur here near me. And um, he said, you know, will you do this? And I said, Oh, I'd love to, you know, he had been on 40 cups as a guest. So, you know, just kind of exploring this idea of gratitude. And I think that's been such a central part of my coffees as though, you know, I'm so grateful for every human I meet and, and every connection I make because of what we learn from each other. And, you know, there are so many things going on all of the time and that, you know, kind of give that perspective of, of taking a moment and being grateful in the space and being grateful in the moment that whatever I did today, did it make me happy today? Did it make somebody else happy today? Did I help someone today? And, you know, and, and I think that that's kind of a place where I've landed is I don't need to know where I'm going to be 10 years from now because then I'm going to spend all my time worrying about 10 years from now instead of being present, bringing in the moment and being grateful for the opportunities that present today, uh, you know, like this, like this is, this is fantastic to have this conversation with a new person and to make, you know, your community and my community connect. And, you know, hopefully that, that contributes to growing some human experience in some way where we learn to listen and care for and you know recognize we might object but we can still respect that's one of the reasons i do this i mean i wouldn't have used gratitude before this i think i will now right like i i always elevator pitch this show as i don't want to see long form conversation go away right attention spans are down mm-hmm. um you know, mother of mother of three teenagers. Yes, I totally, I totally agree. And, and you know, I, I relish the fact that the process of me doing this show is me talking to one other person with a cup of coffee, uh, and a pen and a paper. Right? Like, I yeah, we're doing this on a computer. Obviously, like there is technology involved, but I'm very old school. Like the, the, <laughs> you might as well be in a diner booth with me somewhere having coffee. Like that's it. Right. And, and I'm grateful for that because there are no news alerts, right? Like there's no, oh, who pinged me on this? My phone's ringing that. No, like none of that. And, you know, one of the exciting parts is I don't know where it's going to end. Like, I don't. Like, yeah, there's, there's unscripted, sure, but like, there's no outline either. And that's no different than a networking call. Right. And, and look, I know I, I kind of like 
early on was like, yeah, so there was some networking stuff that didn't work out well. But I also had some networking calls that were scheduled for 15 minutes that turned into two hours that were just like this. They were just great back and forths talking philosophically about like where you should be or what you should do or you what you should try, which are the real like if you find someone who will give you suggestions instead of directions, hold the fuck on to them. They are a connection worth having in your network and returning to. Because I, I, I'm not saying the people that give you direction have any ill will towards you. That's not the case. But the people who will give you suggestions are the ones who will grow with whatever your I don't know, with whatever my I don't know leads to next. It's like a, it's like a word bank, right? Like they give you like kind of a word bank to go from like, okay, so here's all these options. Like, you know, pick a couple, try them out and then come back as opposed to like, well, you should pick this one. Yeah. Right, you know, like the it makes me think, you know, the the old uh, thinking about your parents, you know, for parents imposing kind of, you know, <laughs> well, that you should be this when you grow up, or or you know, even school telling you what you're capable of, yeah. right? You know, and it, I made me laugh when you were talking about you know being average and thinking about you know like the measurement of our abilities as youth is so kind of abstract and subjective that often it's not a measure of our ability. It's a measure of our interest, of our motivation, of um, the amount of which we understand, you know, what we need to put in to get what we need to get out. You know, like, yeah. I know I need to have this mark so mom doesn't ground me or so, you know, <laughs> like, I have to pass physics so dad can let me have the car, uh, you know, and, and that's what really motivates us when we're young. So, you know, those things are not that powerful. They're not an indicator of your long term success path, you know. Well, date the nerd. He's going to be better off. <laughs> well, well I, you know what? I hope, but I will counter with this. My, um, I don't remember if it's median or mean, whatever happens most often. I think that's the mean, right? The median is the middle, but the mean is the one that happens most often. So the mean of every progress report, report card, um, parent teacher conference, et cetera, period, the end. From K through probably college for me was, and I, I, I kid you not with like a few exceptions, was he seems unmotivated, right? And the few exceptions are the teachers that were actually able to motivate me, right? Mm -hmm. There's your exception. So am I average? No, probably not. But then again, I don't think anybody's average. However, if you don't get the motivation right, you will never see exceptional. Right. Like, OK, if the money, the car not being grounded is enough of a motivational factor. Sure. Maybe you'll be exceptional. But for most of us, not getting the car or being grounded for a little bit or, you know, not getting the allowance or get like that's just the bare minimum of existing. There's no motivation there. Yeah, I think that's such an interesting concept. You know, this, this piece of you know, the exceptional thing, you know, we're talking about you know jobs, right? And and what's your career path? And and you know, young people saying, you know, I want to be an influencer when I grow up. And and there's this concept now that in order to be a success or to be measured as as a success, you have to be exceptional on those standards, like the followers or the you know the yeah. I don't know likes or whatever they all are. And, and it's just you know, it's it's a really interesting piece that that piece of you know, what does it mean to be exceptional? You know, I hope I have an exceptional moment and you know almost every day like you know this is this was an awesome opportunity or you know this really made my day or this coffee was amazing or what, whatever it might be i mean most coffee is amazing but let's be honest yeah, yeah. <laughs> except for you know poorly poorly made coffee but in its nature it was set to be exceptional but yeah like i just uh, yeah this this whole phenomenon of you know how we measure success is really really interesting where we are right now in the world and and that perception you know like you might perceive someone as being more exceptional or how you measure it you know i know that my children you know see people online and they're doing trips and they're doing all those things the influencers do and they have you know these cool cars or whatever they have and and i always laugh and you know think about you know when Emma Thompson that one time came up, I think it was at the Oscars or the Golden Globes and she won an award and she came up, must have been the Golden Globes because they were drinking and she had a drink in her hand and she had her shoes in her other hand and accepting her award. And she was just 
confident in who she was and able to go up in front of her peers. And I was like, I don't ever want to be an actress, but I want to be Emma Thompson when I grow up because I want to be able to walk up on a stage with my shoes in my hands and be confident that I am who I am and I'm at peace with that and that, you know, other people, you know, respect me. They don't have to like me, but they respect me. You know, that that moment when she she did that to me, that's stuck in my head is, you know, that's that's what I want to have. That's that's my goal. What what industry that is a part of, or whether it's not just being a good person. And I think that's that's kind of the place. There are a few things I'd like to say about this episode, but first, let me clear up my horrible math. It wasn't mean or median. The most common occurrence in a set of numbers is actually the mode. So I was wrong. And all of the mathematicians out there, this is why I want to have one of you on my show to set me on the path towards number knowledge. Anyway, a few things to point out from the discussion you just heard that were correct. The power of no isn't just in saying it. It's in being able to accept it. Asking for anything at all is quite similar. You ask and there will be an answer that by any measure will often be yes or no. If you are not afraid of the no, then you're more likely to ask the question in the first place. Not being afraid of a no is an extremely valuable and important tool. Now, you did hear a bit about career transitions and career trajectories and hobbies and passions and not knowing what was going to happen. First, I personally have come to embrace this, but more importantly, we all evolve. It is important to recognize that the things we like today, the things we don't, are not always going to be the same tomorrow. We learn, we experience, and we grow. And with all of that, we change. And do you know what else changes? Success. By definition, what makes success changes based on who you are, what you do, and most importantly, what you want. And you don't come to those answers just maintaining your own status quo. You have to ask yourself the hard questions. And here's the thing, you have to answer them too. Self-evaluation is a huge part of therapy. And whether you think it's a racket or a lifesaver, you have to admit people who come out of sessions, especially longer term commitments to the practice, have a better handle on who they are. Does it solve all of their problems? No but they are better able to handle them because they are self-aware of their strengths and weaknesses, which is also something that changes as we evolve. The point is, and I keep coming back to this point often enough that I guess it's another podcast theme for those of you playing Palmer Files Bingo, is change is constant. And if we maintain our own self-awareness, we can be aware of those changes. So when was the last time you asked yourself the hard questions? What do you want to do? Where do you want to be? And most importantly, when was the last time you answered those questions honestly? Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 69. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes. And now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You can tweet me at Agent Palmer, my guest Jennifer Montgomery at 40 Cups of Coffee. That's four zero cups of coffee or this show at the palmer files you can find more information about jennifer and 40 cups at bluedoorgroup.ca email can be sent to this show at the palmer files at gmail.com and remember your home for all things agent palmer is agentpalmer.com Jennifer, do you have one final question for me? Absolutely. So this is a question that I ask.
pretty much everybody that I have coffee with. Um, and it's probably the last question I ask them as well. I ask them, you know, what's your superpower? My not if you could have any superpower, not like, you know, if I could have it, no, but what is your superpower? My superpower. Um, you know, I feel like it is, it, it, it's, it's a combination. It's whatever happens when you put persistence and perseverance into a hydron collider. I don't know what that in, ends up being because if I'm on your side, you're stuck with me. <laughs> like I've got a friend who is uh, working on a movie and now I'm his producer because like we would talk about it and I would help him. I was like, I want to help you. That's it. Period. I just, I want to help you. And now I'm, helping him on a much more regular basis as opposed to just being on the phone when he's complaining about this project. Now I'm in there with him. Right. Um, I got a friend who, um, whose book of poetry I edited and he's working on his second one and he's stuck with me as an editor until he fires me, which is not possible because we've known each other for like three, four decades. Right. So like if I'm on your side, um, uh, you're stuck with me and I'm going to push you. Right. That, and I think that's my superpower. It's not, I mean, it's, it's really good for other people. I don't know. <laughs> eh, not, not so good. I mean, I, I don't push myself as hard as I push others. Uh, I think that's what superpowers are. I think they are better for other people than they are for you. I mean, okay. Then yeah, then that's definitely my superpower. And that and the ability to piss both of those friends and other friends off by being five steps ahead, right? Like one of the things that I can do really well is see the details and the big picture at the same time. And I can connect the dots a little bit. So like one of my former bosses who was one of my favorite bosses of all time would get very upset. Cause I would be like, yeah, we're going to change this little detail and it's not going to work in five years what like that's a jump like i know that's a statement i've made to her right and i know the look i got from her when i said <laughs> it right because yeah. no one talks like that and you know maybe the two things were slightly related or unrelated or maybe it's because we're doing this thing and it won't work in five years but yeah let's make it pretty now you know maybe whatever it was but i i can do the details and the big picture and a lot of the times i can see how they connect and People don't like that, by the way. I, I, I will say that. Like, I, 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 as a secondary superpower, I can absorb other people's, like, dislike. Because, you know, <laughs> I don't, I look, I may not remember all the details of things. And I may not be able to completely, coherently put things together. But I'm right often enough that I'm like, that won't work in five years. And you will ask me how, and I'll have no real, like, uh, I just, it just won't like, you'll have to trust me. I, I can't always connect the dots between looking at the details and seeing the big picture. You're just going to have to trust me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My brother-in-law, he has this like great super superpower and this talent where he can take two words uh, that don't relate to one another or like, or like in some sort of context and he puts them together to make something new. And it's always made my kids laugh. They always thought like this was the best thing about their uncle Mike was like, <laughs> he could make these new words out of words that already existed, like mind blown. Right. Yeah. Maybe this is your word. Like maybe you have like first or first stance. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to workshop that one. Um, yeah. But I guess that's, that's my thing. I think that's a fantastic superpower.